Hi, this is Charlie Montatiello with another video about Native American flute making. As always, this video is going to be a very short and simple one. Uh, it's just basically about making a replacement flute block if something happens that you break or lose yours. It's not a really uncommon thing to happen. It happens quite all the time. As a matter of fact, one of my good friends lost one and needed me to send him a new one, and I thought, well, hey, I'll make a video while I'm at it. So um, what we do is we use bamboo or river cane or any type of uh, hollow reed that we make a lot of our flutes out of and I've got one here that's cut about the size that my block needs to be like so and a really simple technique that we're going to use involves pretty much my pocket knife and a piece of sandpaper so anybody can do this and any of you that are at home wondering how you're going to make your flute block work and uh, I'll show you a couple of advanced techniques just a little few tricks that I know that might help you out too while I'm at it but uh, this would be a good way and a very simple way to do it. It's the way I used to make hundreds of flute blocks but uh, if you would come and zoom in on this and let's see what it looks like. Okay so what I've got like I say just my regular old pocket knife be very careful I don't know if you can see the scars on my hands but I've got a lot of them and uh, I mean here's some fresh ones here but uh, anyway what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of slice it I don't know what to compare this with, but we're going to slice it um, in a way that we're going to get as much flat out of it as we can. If we cut it over here, obviously, it's going to be like a rainbow, and uh, you'll have an archway. If you slice it way up here, it might be too thin, but we're going to get as much thickness of the bamboo as we can at the same time keeping it flat on the bottom as we can. So just like this right here. I do have X-Acto knives I use for this occasionally, but uh, the uh, sharp wedge of a very thick bladed knife does a great job as you may notice it still has some rounding here reasonably good and thick nice and flat right there and I'm just taking some regular old hand sandpaper here just back and forth just a little bit and just keep rubbing it back and forth just like Indian flute making 101 right here this particular technique of rubbing a, a piece of wood or a piece of stone back and forth on either a rock or some sandpaper or whatever you got is something people have been doing for thousands of years. Not just Native Americans, of course, but uh, this is how you shape things. And look at that, it's almost flat. It's a pretty simple technique. Like I say, nice and flat. It even feels nice and smooth, too. Now, let's see what it looks like. It's kind of hanging over the edge a little bit right there. So what we're going to do is, once again, take the old trusty pocket knife out. And we're going to shave those edges off, just like that. Like that. little technique here I use. If you notice I, I do that and then I hit it kind of gently, not real hard, because with a wedge it only takes a little bit of effort to get that to go through there. And what you really don't want to do is come down on it really hard and this piece here jab in your hand. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go back and forth just a little bit more to make sure we've got all the edges as flat as absolutely possible. Then we're going to, let's see, sand this piece right here off a little bit here a little bit and let's see what it looks like on the flute looks like it fits pretty well looks pretty good there but it hangs over just a little bit now there's a lot of ways we can fix that the obvious way would be to just continue sanding that's a good option another way this is another uh, kind of uh, I guess ancient technique it's a chipping technique that we're scraping now I don't know if any of you notice, but I'm actually keeping my thumb away from the blade on this guy. And before you decide to use anything, especially, I didn't say especially, especially <laughs> if you're some of my younger viewers, which we get quite a few of asking good questions, very smart young folks these days. But if you uh, are doing this, please be careful. If you need supervision, make sure you have it. Sometimes I feel like I need supervision myself. <laughs> Like I said, seeing all the cuts and scratches. But anyway, so we're using this uh, kind of 
draw and chip technique. And once again, the knife is actually completely in my control. I've got it locked into my my fingers here. So just kind of draw and chip and we're pulling outward as we do it. Now we want it flat, but we can make it flat with a sandpaper and not worry so much about doing that with the knife. And one other benefit I might have over a lot of y'all is all the calluses. I don't know if I can even cut myself with a knife anymore. <laughs> No, you're all laughing thinking well I've seen the scars so let's see that's not too bad let's see if we can do it this way just a little bit make sure that if you push down on something like this like a table or what have you that it's not your kitchen table or a really beautiful antique one make sure it's designed to be used just like this guy right here is designed to be used and used and used and I think that's about got us right there. So let's see what that looks like here. Again, I'm going to sand it just a little bit. And then from there, we're going to check it on the flute. It's still a little bit too long. I think we can do a little better than that. Now this technique's a little more dangerous. This is like the hack in the... Uh, destroy technique which isn't necessarily as efficient but it's certainly quick as oh get out I only use this kind of technique whenever you've got a video that you want to keep it about five minutes that you're making how does that sound little joke there everybody so let's sand this guy down again and see where we're at Man, we have got a long ways to go. So, once again, just want to make sure that I showed you guys a number of different ways to do things here. Once again, very dangerous. Working with knives close to your hands. Lots of scars to prove it. Most woodworkers I know have gotten at least one or two major injuries. So I would personally recommend being extremely cautious. Matter of fact, if you had a hacksaw, it would speed something like this up a lot. But I want to make sure that you know that you can do this kind of thing with a pocket knife. Likewise, we have a couple of videos coming up here pretty soon that you might enjoy where I'm going to be making a flute just with a pocket knife. And... Uh, it's not going to be the next ones we upload, but it's not that far down the road from where we are right now on videos. You have to excuse my sniffles. It was spring whenever we were shooting this video, and I tell you what, the pollen is really bad. Now. If you just go back and forth like this, it'll take you a little while, but you could actually shape that entire block any way you want to like that with just a piece of sandpaper. Turn the paper over, get me a fresh side on it. Let's see how far we are now. So close. Tell you what we're going to do here. I'm going to leave it pretty much the size that it is, just kind of clean off the back side a wee bit. And then, after I uh, get it the size that I want it, I'm going to come back and scrape it at an angle. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling it at an angle like this so that it will round, bevel this uh, surface right here. Something else I can do with my pocket knife, by the way. I mean, never get uh, intimidated by lack of tools believe me you can uh, very carefully do this like that if you scrape it uh, like this guy right here I always watch those fingers anyway anything is possible no matter your skill level or your tool level or what you got and to tell you the truth most of this technique right here is the way I've made thousands of flutes. Oh my gosh. 
back in the day. <laughs> These days, you know, we got the trusty old belt sander. But, so let's see how that looks. Whoa, how about that? No, no, that's a sweet flute block right there. Not as pretty as it could be. Let's grab a piece of steel wool and see if we can't pretty that up just a little bit. Sometimes that gray discoloration on the outside of the bamboo or river cane looks cool. Sometimes you want to take it off. So, a lot more natural and everything looking there. I'm going to, uh, to clamp that down for a second. Something I don't know if many of you have thought of is using these little squeezy clamps. We talked about that in another video. Now, an advanced technique, something I wanted to show you. Instead of making a flute block that um, basically, let's see if this makes a good example, comes square at the edge, which is not a bad idea. What I've done is I've made one that has a bevel on it. It helps to project some of the air back down that would normally just rise up and escape on out. So uh, it looks as if from the top view that it's covering part of the hole. But if you look from the side view, I believe you can probably see it there. Uh, that uh, basically the uh, let's see area right here is lined up with the back edge of the the flute sound hall which is what you want it to do um, so we've got that going on one thing that this does other than projecting the air back towards the flute it helps um, if you have a flute that is tending to uh, jump octave, especially on that bottom note, and you don't want it to. Um, this will help with that. If you have a flute that's gone 30, 40 cents too sharp, and you need to, uh, um, once again, tune into <laughs> the old Pythagorean scale, uh, if you want to tune it just a little flatter, a block like this and a little experimentation, you can tune this thing almost a half a step to a step lower by where you put the uh, um, little block on top of the track and what angle you have it at. Sometimes I'll make a block that has a track that's got a real steep angle on it and especially with my low tone flutes I find that that helps out a great deal in keeping the notes where they belong. So just a real simple video, like I say, this is just a real easy flute block something I did with my hands. You know, back in the day, I used to do this number right here to make my flutes. Um, you know, things have changed and, you know, we make a lot more elaborate and, and uh, special flutes these days. But, uh, like I said, just wanted to give you an idea of some of that. Um, instead of zooming back out, just want to tell you thanks again for watching. We appreciate you guys very much. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, send us a message, post it on YouTube here. We've started getting the hang of the new YouTube and how they want us to check our messages and whatnot, so if we've missed you, I'm so sorry. Please contact us via uh, contact form on our website, bluebearflutes.com. And if you get a chance while you're there, look at the very top of our uh, site. There's a link to our newest album, which is An Ocean of Feelings of the Native American Flute. And uh, it's a beautiful album, all uh, piano and Native American flute music. Uh, myself, of course, and I really love it. It's my favorite out of nine albums, and that's really saying something. So, anyway, if you guys have any other questions or have any other video requests that you'd like to make, please make sure you do. Keep tuned uh, into us, because as I said, we're going to have some really neat videos soon, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So, once again, Charlie Matatuyela signing off for Blue Bear Flutes and Blue Bear Arts. And uh, check us out on our Facebook if you get a chance at facebook.com forward slash blueberryarts. Take care and happy flute making.